Welcome back. This morning, we revealed that North Carolina is America's top state for business in our annual CNBC study. But if there are top states, there must also be bottom states. And Scott Cohn is back to tell us how this year's bottom state has a plan to get out of the cellar once and for all, Scott. That's right, Kelly. Uh, yeah, we do rank all 50 states. You got to do that to figure out which states are number one, two, three, four, and five. And here are the bottom states. Uh, at number 46 is West Virginia with America's least educated workforce. At number 47, Hawaii, it's the most expensive state to do business in. State number 48 is Mississippi, dead last for business friendliness. State 49 is Louisiana, finishing near the bottom for life, health, and inclusiveness. At the bottom, it's Alaska, but Alaska does think that they have a way to turn things around. In bottom state Alaska, oil is their economic lifeblood, but they breathe carbon, exhaled here in the form of emissions, inhaled and absorbed here in the state's vast forests. And it's how Governor Mike Dunleavy wants to transform the economy once and for all. Just like oil, just like gas, just like our timber, this is a commodity. That can be monetized now. Under a new law, Alaska will sell credits to polluters who can offset their carbon emissions by paying to protect and preserve Alaska's 100 million acres of forest. What the state doesn't spend on the forest, it gets to keep as revenue. State Natural Resources Commissioner John Boyle says it's a way to free Alaska from the ups and downs of oil. It certainly helps provide that measure of stability to the state to not be tied to one particular commodity price. And they're not done yet. Next, a proposal to capture carbon from the atmosphere and store it underground, taking advantage of Alaska's massive size and maybe helping the planet. They're all in on this in Alaska. This program passed the state legislature nearly unanimously, only two votes against it in the House. But outside of Alaska, there are a lot of critics, people who call it greenwashing or worse. They wonder if Alaska is going to use that money to actually preserve its forests. And if not, what's the money going for other than revenue? Uh, but Commissioner Boyle says they could be seeing revenue from this within the next uh, 12 to 18 months, maybe in time for next year's top state study. Kelly? But does their fossil fuel industry actually make them a bad state for business? Or is that actually a good business to be in, especially, you know, the way energy prices have been lately and the fact that we seem to now need to rely on them, you know, during this transition more than ever? The thing is that it's volatile. That's that's the issue that they're trying to deal with. So uh, as much as 85 to 90 percent of their state revenue comes from oil production. So if oil production is down, which it's been in the last several years as kind of shale oil states uh, pick up some of this, uh, then they're, they're down in revenue. If the price of oil goes down, then they're in trouble as well. So what their hope is, and they've been talking about this forever, they've been talking about trying to diversify the state economy, and that's what they want to do. Now they have this Willow project that will eventually come online. That will certainly help, uh, and, there, and there certainly is a need for, for oil. But uh, what the John Boyle, the state natural resources commissioner, said was all of these companies that are trying to get to net zero they're not going to be able to just do that with the existing technology, so they're going to have to do things like buying these offset credits, and that's what they're staking the future. Sure, and maybe they could have a toehold in that you know, industry of the future as well. Scott, as always, we very much enjoy your reporting. Thanks for bringing it to us today.